So um, side tree development and operating group, if can can folks see my uh, my screen at this point? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so side tree development and operating group, it is a group where we are essentially working on the side tree protocol, which is a scalable um, kind of, I, I would call it meta protocol because it itself isn't a DID method. It is a um, protocol that you can apply to any target trust layer um, to create a scalable DID method. So, um, you know, you, you it, it, the batteries are almost included, right? You need to plug in like your own, let's say blockchain or, you know, whatever that underlying trust layer is where um, the chronology of DID events as we know them to be, right? Like creation or updating DIDs, keys, that sort of thing, where those events are actually anchored. Um, because obviously lineage is, is about most importance any any DID method needs to be able to prove that, you know, given the res resolution of Alice's did, I get the right thing back. And so SideTree is primarily focused on advancing SideTree based um, did methods as well as the underlying core protocol. And that's what this working group's about. You know, we welcome operators of, you know, SideTree based did methods to, to party, even if they're, you know, non-technical folks, maybe they're businesses that want to run these things. Um, so you don't have to be you know, a technical wizard to be able to be a part of the group. It's really there for coordination. Um, you can check out like our meeting page and some of our other stuff here. The protocol itself um, is is a specification in diff. Uh, we're, we're very, very close to 1.0. Um, you know, there's a couple, mostly just editorial uh, things similar to the presentation exchange in, in its life cycle um, that are landing um, hopefully this week and we believe we'll be done by the end of January. So this will be ready to rock and roll and there's a few implementations of this right now. You know, wide variety of people have worked on the specification. Um, the spec is really about trying to create something that, scale, that, that works at scale. Um, so what, what you'll see is there's a ton of DID methods in the world that you know, they work great in test labs, right? Like I've got, you know, a hundred DID or hundred companies with DIDs and, you know, they'll, they'll scale fine to those heights. But what happens when, you know, you need globally resolvable DIDs that scale to billions or tens of billions. And, and that's what this is most concerned with. Um, it has a lot of the same security functions um, that you might find in other, you know, in other sort of schemes, like for instance, Kerry has this rotational scheme, um, which is both of this and Kerry, I think really harken back to um, the precursor, like Bitcoin's uh, pay to public key hash, essentially a, a forward commitment of a key in a lineage that is hash linked. So all these things are incorporated just as they are in other, you know, great diff work like Kerry. Um, so check out Kerry as well, you know, um, I'm gonna plug that too. Um, but these these things are baked into SideTree and any implementation that's conformant, regardless of what ledger um, underneath it, uh, it uses, for instance, here's a diagram, regardless of what ledger, uh, ledger it uses, they all operate the same. They have the same protocol rules. They, they basically give you the same guarantees. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I don't have a SideTree specific presentation, um, but I'm... I have one that basically is about ion, but it doesn't talk about ion very much. Um, it's it's so I'll I'll just go through it and ignore the couple mentions of ion. Just think in your mind like side tree, because what ion is is just an implementation of side tree, right? It's it's not significantly different than probably someone else's implementation on another system. Um, but for these purposes, I'll walk you through you know what side tree looks like. So obviously, like I said, we're trying to solve this scaling trilemma. Um, what do you want? You want decentralization, scalability, and security kind of, kind of all in one. And that's, that's difficult, um, <clears throat> but we, we're going to endeavor to do it in SideTree. Uh, what, what's the scale, right? So we got to think in terms of scale. And uh, if you want things like burner dids, you know, did key is great. If you want things like dids uh, for, you know, publicly accessible devices or packages for package management, or maybe it's your social did, right? We saw a lot of people lose their social dids uh, for better, for worse, some, some, you know, justly or not um, over the last few weeks. And, you know, what is digital identity in today's age? I would argue digital identity will become you. It might even become more important in some analog interactions. So it's important that people have an option for, you know, resolvable digital identity that protects them from all sorts of actors, be it, you know, nefarious governments in, in areas where human rights are an issue. So um, the scale is billions, 
you know, 7.5 billion people, that would be if everyone just had like one Twitter did, um, you know, that would be a lot of dids, right? But we're gonna, we think people have more than one did. So we gotta, we gotta make sure this thing scales. Um, tactical overview. So don't look at ION. Actually, I'll just skip it. <laughs> uh, requirements for DBGA. Um, what do we need, right? Any, any underlying system needs a global immutable append only log. And, you know, I'm not gonna say the word blockchain here because, you know, you just need to make sure that the log for a given ID of their DID operations is global and immutable and can be resolved deterministically. Um, so that there's no question as to whether, you know, Alice's DID is currently in state X or state Y. There has to be one answer. Um, no centralized providers or authorities is what we endeavor, um, you know, side tree to be able to be capable of. So some constructions use permission blockchains and that's fine, you know, depending on their use case, but we certainly want to be at least as decentralized as whatever underlying trust layer you apply it to. Um, and the outcome should be a, a censorship and tamper resistant did system um, that supports really any type of application or service use case. Um, so some technical assumptions. Um, SideTree assumes there is zero secondary consensus. It relies only on the linearization of events of whatever system, trust system it is applied to. So that could be Bitcoin or Ethereum or you know, some sort of permissioned uh, ledger. It, whatever the guarantees it gives you, uh, the underlying ledger system about linearization of events is the same sort of security premise you're going to have at this layer. Um, no conflicting states are allowed. So there is no ability for two nodes that are, you know, have the same implementation to come up with different answers. You, if given the same data, two nodes will always come up with the same answers because it is a deterministic protocol. There's no subjective trusted intermediaries in between saying, oh no, it's Alex is in state X versus state Y. It really just comes down to math over data. Um, IDs are not transferable between entities. So this is a big one. Um, the protocol, realized early on that if you don't allow transferability of IDs, you could have a globally resolvable ID system, um, but one that uh, where IDs can't be transferred because that's actually what kills scale, right? You see all these implementations of, of domain names over like blockchains and stuff. Principally, the reason why they have a really hard time scaling is, you know, they have to do uh, invalidations and voting and, you know, uh, re-registration and all these things that require a true double spend. Whereas if you think IDs are just immutably yours, like whoever creates it should be assumed to be the owner, um, you can get rid of a lot of those scale issues. So that's kind of what this key realization at was, but I'll, I'll skip over it. Um, don't think ION here and don't think Bitcoin, just sub substitute your own, you know, your own implementation name and your own blockchain, let's say it's Ethereum or, you know, some ledger or whatever, um, a witness set, for instance, at the bottom, doesn't matter. Um, what, what a implementation will do um, is it can aggregate, a node can aggregate a bunch of operations into batches, right? So let's say um, Alice wants to anchor her DID. She wants a globally resolvable DIDs because she wants to join the new decentralized Twitter so that when, you know, someone gets hot and bothered, you know, and they say, you know, I, I, I dispatch you for all time. They, they aren't really doing anything because Alice owns her DID. So people are following her DID not a centralized user ID, it's an important thing. So she wants to have one of these globally resolvable IDs. And she says, you know what? I'm not running an ION node. So uh, how, do, how am I gonna create one of these things? So what she does is creates some uh, public private key pair on her device that never leave her device. And she creates an operation that stands for the create operation of her DID. And she might send it and she can send it to any other node, right? In, in that particular network and in that instantiation of side tree. And, those nodes can batch them together in groups of right now, the recommended batch size is 10,000 and anchor them via an IPFS hash in some target witness system, right? Whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum or, you know, I don't know, some sort of node set. Um, and that, that way she's able to gain benefits economically and from scale without having to say like in Bitcoin's case, like, hey, go and everyone do a Bitcoin transaction because we know that's not going to work, right? Um, there's been other protocols that have DID protocols that have attempted to do that to say, you know, every wallet address that you do a transaction for on Bitcoin is going to be a DID. Um, we can obviously understand where that's going to run into some issues at seven transactions per second. So 10,000 operations, pretty good, right? We, we, the system at 10,000 operations runs at a thousand operations per second. Uh, it's, it's really good. Um, we're talking about nearly 50 billion DID operations per year. Um, and so Alice, if she is 
anchoring her operation with node one, she gets all the same guarantees she would if she were to run an ion uh, or a side tree node, which she could, right? And she could do the operation herself, which just costs money. Um, but the cool thing is because the keys never left her device, the only thing she'd be relying on the person operating say node one here to do is include it, right? Something that she can independently verify, which is super important. Um, so there's nothing else that an operator of an anchoring um, that's performing the anchoring function uh, can do other than not include your stuff, right? They could say, oh, I don't like you. I'm not going to include your stuff. Uh, they can't change the operations. They can't, you know, you know, uh, in any way compromise them because they're signed on your client. And so they're immutable. And that's a really awesome feature because it gives you the ability to export as a user who might not be technical and be running one of these things on say like a little nuck at home, a lot of the, dis, you know, a lot of the difficulty and cost um, to, to a party without having to really trust them in that same sense. If node one was a, you know, bad actor and Alice, you know, found out that she wasn't anchored, like she did the check and, oh wait, my DID operation was not in there. Um, she can then turn around to go to any other node or she could fire one up herself. So it is as like when applied to a public blockchain like Bitcoin, Ethereum, something like that, it is as interdiction resistant as Bitcoin, for instance, itself. And that is the guarantee that Sidetree gives you is the same interdiction resistance that you would get from the underlying chain. We can't make it any better than that, right? Because obviously that's the, the stop point for interdiction resistance is the underlying trust system. So how does this work? So node one has this batch, it anchors it. All the other nodes are essentially looking at the trust system. They're looking at this, this anchoring substrate for these inbound transactions that are encoded with, uh, with side tree um, you know, based uh, DID encoding. So they're looking for essentially an IPFS hash. And when they find it, they request it from IPFS, which is what all the nodes are running, right? They're, they're all pinning the same data set. Just think about it like old school Linux mirrors where everyone's like mirroring the, you know, the software or BitTorrent, right? Um, it's a widely known set of data that is optimistically downloaded and fetched and re replicated by these nodes. So when they see the IPFS hash in there, they go get it and they all, you know, start cranking the data. Now the operations inside that batch are processed by a module inside of a side tree compliant did method. And they all arrive at the same answer because the operations inside, like I said, are you know linked together. Like all of Alice's DID operations are securely linked by her set of key transformations and signatures. And they all come to the same conclusion. Given the same operation data, all um, it, provably and formally, all Cytree nodes will come to the same conclusion about Alice's did state. So um, this is this is a, a little bit older of a diagram, but um, it will give you a you know a super high level understanding here. From the Cytree transaction inside of a block, um, there's an anchor file, right? It links to that from the IPFS hash, which also links to some other files in addition to a batch file. Inside these batch files is this big verbose data, which is sort of like the DID payloads, right? Like the patches and all that stuff. Um, now, one thing we did in SideTree, right, you know, sort of right before the last release was we created a light node and a full node capability so that you could spin up a light node as we term it, which is about one, um, probably about one twentieth of the data. Um, so you don't have to have all the data. It's just these, these anchor files, these proving files. Um, and if you have those, you can still resolve every DID with just the exact same trust guarantees. You can just get the more verbose files on demand. So it's almost like just in time processing um, given the base data set. Um, what is, what is uh, SideTree, right? The, this SideTree protocol really is a conflict-free resolution data type uh, system that converges. Um, so it's strongly, uh, can, strongly eventually consistent. Um, so given the same deltas, the same changes over Alice's DID, all, all nodes in the system will come to the same understanding of, of the current state. And a CRDT is something you use every day. So it's, this isn't even really, I would call new technology, maybe put a new little spin on it, but um, you use CRDTs when you type in a Google Doc or, or any of the other documents that are collaborative, where you see like someone's able to change certain things at the same time as you. What those things are using in the back end is a CRDT. And typically what happens is there are streams of changes to something, a target document, in this case, a Google doc. And um, those changes are then assessed in a centralized system by an arbiter, 
right? Google is essentially incrementing them on your client and saying, this is change one, this is change two. And then a server puts them all together and says, change one from Bob and change two from Alice equals this output. Now, that's the point of centralization in a traditional CRDT based system is someone's got to increment the time, right? We got to solve time because if you don't solve time, someone could say, well, I'm going to make a change and I'm going to, I'm going to backdate it. I'm going to say it happened here. Or I'm going to branch off in history. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to diverge. I'm going to create states 2A and 2B. Um, and without something that, arbit that is the arbiter of that, you kind of have to rely on a centralized intermediary. So what SideTree does is it uses the underlying trust system as that chronology. So we don't have to trust what was the vector, what was the, the change at time you know, X or Y. We just say, oh, it was anchored in a system that linearizes that vector. So there's no like you know, there is no consensus or PBFT or any discussion about, um, do we all agree it when it happened? It happened because in the case of giving Bitcoin an example, it was encoded in a linear proof of work that is incredibly difficult to change and is in, is very mutable in, in the sense of its recorded history. So we rely on that ordering. Um, so Cytri is an ordering based protocol. Um, go ahead and just don't look, at ION here. Um, I'm getting feedback, but it's someone's got their let's see, mic on. Okay, cool. So what do we get, right? Any side tree based method is going to get massive scale. You know, we're talking about thousands to tens of thousands of operations per second. And we've, we've tested this on consumer machines, like a 2017 Intel NUC. It's pretty good and able to do a thousand per second, um, cost efficient. Um, because you can anchor 10,000 DID operations as the recommended amount in any given batch, um, you're looking at you know fractions of a penny, maybe a tenth or a hundredth of a penny in some cases. Uh, so if you had to charge users, you don't have to charge them that much. Um, if you're an anchoring node, permissionless. So when applied to a, a blockchain like say Bitcoin or Ethereum or you know something like that, uh, it's as permissionless as the underlying blockchain itself. So you can't block anyone out. Microsoft, if we you know, run ION, we're not the arbiters of ION. Um, we can't keep you from going and doing a compliant transaction in Bitcoin, for instance, um, just like the element method uh, that Transmute has, has done. You know, the, if you can write to Ethereum you know, in, this, in the smart contract that has the logic that it has, um, you, you can't be stopped in that sense. And flexible nodes, right? Really important that someone can be able to run something on a NUC uh, or a small device at home, because if you know only giant data centers can run this, we we haven't we haven't innovated anything. Um, we're going to fail, and and we're going to be left with the same world we have today. So uh, it's very important that that not happen. So that's a, a walkthrough of Ion. Um, <clears throat> the side tree spec is nearing V1, like I said. So please, we we welcome you to uh, come in there and 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 please get your commentary, read it over. You know, if if something doesn't make sense, you know, file an issue. Um, we're really trying to close it up here in the last stretch. Um, but, you know, I'll open it up for questioning questions with the last five minutes or defer to other, you know, people that have been implementing this like uh, Ori or, you know, Tobias or any of the folks who, you know, have methods other than ours. Um, Ori, uh, others, is there anything you'd like to, to add potentially? I think you did a great job covering everything, Daniel. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions about, um, no, any, any questions about this that folks had? Side tree in general? Okay. All right. Hey, Daniel, it's Gordon. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> hey, uh, just so you know, I sent you a link on LinkedIn. Um, so we're, we're just getting started in the uh, DID, DIF uh, arena with validity. And <clears throat> so, so we're right on with you in regards to the marketplace <laughs> because we, we, we are telling out all of our prospective in, uh, investors that every, you know, we need to help all 7 billion people on Earth, right? 7.5 billion. Um, so... So we really, so I really want to, and I'm trying really hard to participate in as many of these type of things as I can uh, in regards to finding others to work with and then also to you know, make sure we're co-developing down the same path. Um, 
um, where, so, so I'm here, what are some other resources specific to joining on the business model side, as opposed to just the tech? Cause I, the, the problem I see with us as an industry is that, you know, we're great at building the tech, but we really kind of suck at bringing customers. And so how do we do that, um, as a group is really what I'm trying to do. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think that that's, that might be an overarching question that goes beyond SciTree. Obviously, SciTree, um, you know, there's the question of how do we make uh, operation of nodes of SciTree based ed methods viable? And I yeah. think that's, that's what the operating group is there for. Those are a very um, a segmented set of those questions. I think if you're talking about general business in terms of DIDs and VCs and all that stuff, bringing in more member companies is something that we obviously want to attack. We're doing that with the, um, with the um, interop working group. And we're, we're starting to reach more proactively out to a bunch of businesses to, to get things going in terms of like schema registries and, you know, things everyone can use in common. So I would potentially defer really to um, say Belaz and, and Riven and then some of the people leading those other broader efforts, because I think that's where that question is best answered. Okay. 